This is Nate Story with Bright Agro Tech, and today I'm going to talk really quickly about nitrifying bacteria. So there are two microbial processes that uh, you'll hear people talk about when they're talking about aquaponic systems. One is uh, nitrification, and one is mineralization. Today, we're going to talk about nitrification. This is basically the mi microbial process by which ammonia is converted into nitrate, and uh, the nitrogen in the system is made more available to the plants. Mineralization uh, entails a host of other processes that we'll get into at a different time. This typically um, is referring to other nutrients. In the previous video, I mentioned that Nitrobacter and Nitrosomonas are the two bacterial species that are most commonly associated with nitrification. But uh, the, the reality of the situation is that it's much more complex than that. It's not quite that simple. There are a lot of different bacteria that um, oxidize ammonia and oxidize nitrite uh, to produce nitrate. Um, a lot of uh, traditional uh, aquaponics folks will say that nitrification happens best in the range of 7.5 to 8.5, somewhere in a pH range like this. Um, this is true for Nitrous Ammonis and Nitrobacter. They tend to like these more basic pH values, uh, but the reality is, is that both of those bacterial species will function in lower pH ranges, and there's also lots of other bacteria that do the same work at lower pH ranges. So this is kind of the traditional pH range that people tell you to run your system at. I say run your pH range somewhere between 6 and 6.8 or 6 or 7, somewhere in that range. Uh, this is going to be kind of the ideal range. This 6.2 to 6.4 range is best for nutrient availability, in my experience, and balancing the nitrification needs of the system, as well as kind of the ammonia ammonium uh, balance there. And um, you know, this is this is kind of the preferred range for most of my systems. So we need to say that um, nitrifying bacteria are very, very sensitive to changing variables. So it's very important that if you're going to drop your pH that you do it very slowly. Additionally, if you're going to change temperature or if you're going to change um, you know, the, the amount of nitrogen you're putting in your system, all of these kinds of things, you just want a nice stable environment for this bacteria. They're very, very sensitive to UV light. Okay, so almost all nitrifiers are wimps when it comes to UV light. So if you go through and you stir up your uh, gravel bed or you stir up your media bed or expose your media to light, then expect to see a drop in your nitrification activity. That's just the natural response of the bacteria to being killed off by that exposure to UV light. Similarly, while nitrification processes can progress at really low temperatures as well as low pH values, it takes a long time for your microbial communities to adapt. Nitrification, uh, nitrifying bacteria are just not that hardy and not that responsive to changing variables. It takes a long time for them to adjust. So always take your time and make sure that you're not shocking your nitrifying bacteria too much. So the last thing that needs to be said is that nitrification happens in uh, on biological surface area. Okay, so these are the surface areas um, of your system, and this is called BSA. If you're unclear how BSA works, or how to calculate BSA for your system, or how to understand how uh, BSA affects your nitrification, make sure you check out our uh, video on specific surface area and biological surface area. That's going to explain to you in detail how to make sure you have enough BSA to keep your nitrifying bacteria nice and healthy, happy, and uh, working away in your system. So the end product of all of this is nitrate, okay? And uh, we all know that nitrate is uh, va valuable, helpful stuff. Um, it's what keeps our system cranking along for the most part. In this process of producing nitrate, this, this uh, process of nitrification, we're also producing hydronium ions, okay? So as these hydronium ions are being produced, our water is acidifying. So having a really nice, healthy nitrifying colony means that not only are we converting toxic ammonia and ammonium into nitrate and converting toxic nitrite into nitrate, we're also acidifying the environment. So we're 
we're essentially bringing this pH down. We're consuming carbonates, which is a good thing. We're dropping this pH down closer and closer. And in the end, what it does is it gives us much more control over how we run our system pH-wise and also how much nitrate we're producing in our system. Once you have a really healthy nitrifying bacteria colony, you'll be able to feed at absolutely stupendous rates and get great, great, great nitrification almost immediately. If you have lots of BSA and your colonies are very healthy, you'll feel like you're driving a Ferrari of a system every time you feed. You'll throw feed in and literally an hour later you'll see a response in uh, the nitrate in your system bumping up. So I encourage you to um, check out the Vertical Food blog if you're interested. I'm going to do a post on nitrification where I explain this in a little bit more detail. I explain how this uh, hydronium ion production works, how this lowers pH, and um, talk a little bit about ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate and how we get there. If you find these uh, videos useful, please subscribe and uh, make sure you check out our new webinars that we're doing as well. Uh, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech. Thanks for watching. So a lot of people have asked about fish. What's an appropriate fish for my aqua?